Many thanks for staying with us here on Newsdays to some more stories now. And one more person involved in the Kentamport Road accident, we are told, has died at the Konfanoche Teaching Hospital in the Ashanti region. Now, the deceased was among seven others who were transferred there due to the severity of their injuries. The other six, according to hospital officials, are in stable condition for now and are currently receiving treatment. Correspondent Erastos Asaridonko has been to the hospital and is uh, joining us now with a uh, lot more. Erastos, uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us. So, uh, what's the situation there now? Well, good morning. The situation here, uh, I would say, is being controlled for now. Uh, seven people were brought in uh, as at 5.30 uh, yesterday. Seven people uh, have been brought in. One was declared dead on arrival, and he has been identified as Bonzina Beba. Uh, Bonzina Beba. Uh, he's a male, and uh, he, has been, uh, he was identified as brought in uh, dead. That was one woman uh, who is still on the ventilator, uh, he, he is in the red section, uh, which means that he is uh, not active, uh, she is not conscious, she cannot talk, and she cannot move. Uh, currently, doctors are trying to uh, resuscitate her. She has been on the ventilator since she was brought in yesterday. Uh, now, the other six are either in the red or, uh, sorry, the yellow or orange uh, section, which indicates that they are active. Uh, they are responding to treatment, they are stable, but then they will need either an X-ray or surgery or something. So that, that is the situation here of those who are brought in from King Dambo. Okay. Rastos, many thanks for that update from the Ashanti region there. But let's go on to the phone lines once more and speak to ASP Christopher Teria, who is the public relations officer of the Bono uh, Police command and he's joining us on the phone with uh, some updates on the situation there. Uh, SB, uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Yeah, good morning. So uh, th th there have been a lot of conflicting uh, figures as to how many people have actually died and how many people uh, have sustained injuries in this whole incident at Kentampo. Uh, can you give us the exact numbers? Do we know for sure uh, how many people have perished so far? Yeah, the police have uh, undertaken their inventory and everything is right with us here. On record, we have 61 persons who, who, who died. 61, did you say? 61, 61. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have uh, 25 survivors who are in a serious uh, critical condition. But, but, but the information the police is giving us now seems to contradict the earlier information we had gotten from health officials who were attending to these persons. They tell us that 71 people have actually died, and the police is saying 61. I mean, why the disparity? Yeah, you may find out, but on the police record, it's 61. 61. And then we have 25 survivors, but they are in serious... Uh, uh, condition and six of them have been referred to Konfanochi mm -hmm. and then six others to Techiman Holy okay. Family. So, so does the police, for instance, know that uh, of the six that were referred to the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, one more has passed on? Well, it, when it, it was they were transferred yesterday, so yes. I don't know. Information we are getting yeah. this morning suggests that one yeah. more has actually died. Okay, the Kumase people would uh, give us the information. Okay, but for now, this is the official figure the police has, 61 dead. Yeah, 61. And uh, this is a, a, as of which time? Pardon? As of which time was uh, this record given? Uh, it was uh, yesterday at about uh, 3 o'clock in the evening. 3 p.m., Thursday yeah. evening? Yeah. Okay, okay, right. But uh, now let's talk about investigations so far into what might have caused this. And uh, uh, so far, what have your investigations uncovered? Mm, from uh, witnesses that we gathered, it's an accident that occurred. And uh, some were alive and we spoke to them. And then what they told us was that uh, the uh, metro bus was doing overtaking. And it was done in a sharp cap and through. When we went there, the accident spot, and it is a sharp cap. So as was, you know, making the overtaking, the other vehicles who emerged also on top speed. 
So he came on head, head on collision. So it has got nothing to do with uh, a faulty brake of, uh, of one of the cars? Oh, where the accident happened, what prompted that driver to apply a brake? Where the accident happened? Mm. It happened on a high, high highway. And a sharp airport, so what makes him to apply a brake? For him okay. to know that brake is not effective. So, so those, those reports are untrue. But has the police conducted any assessment whatsoever on the vehicle itself, the Metro Mars bus that, that was uh, involved in this accident, to actually the ascertain vehicle. what you're saying, that it couldn't have possibly been uh, a brake fault? Yeah, the vehicle itself is beyond repairs. The airbus is somewhere. Another engine is also somewhere. So it means the vehicle itself has been dis 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 disassembled. Mm. So, so, so for now, the police is making do with eyewitness accounts. Pardon? So I'm saying, for now, the police is making do with eyewitness accounts. Oh, it's not particularly only on the witness account. We think we've taken some of them, their statements, and this is what they said. But looking at the whole thing, because the, uh, the, the vehicles were found on some, someone's lane. The metro bus was found in uh, another vehicle's lane. And it, it was a shock. So we, we, we just assumed that because it was overspeeding, he went into other way around, which he couldn't do anything. And the other car, the other cargo car also was on his plate. But they met just all of a sudden. They're an urgent, and they have to hit themselves. So what is to happen now? I mean, these are things you've gathered uh, in your preliminary investigations. But what is to happen next? Have you even gotten in touch with the officials of management of Metro Mars Transit, for instance? Yeah, the MTTD would surely do that. Okay. The MTTD would surely do that. And they are investigating because it's an accident case. And they are in charge of uh, motor traffic unit, and they will, they will definitely do that. Okay. Right. ASP, many thanks for your time on news this, this morning. And that was uh, ASP Christopher Teria, who happens to be the public relations officer of the Bonahafo Regional Police, bringing us a lot more updates on that particular accident that happened on Wednesday. Uh, quite a gory one. He tells us that the official police uh, figure is that 61 people have actually perished and about 23 of them uh, are receiving treatment. But... Information we also have suggests that the numbers are a lot more than that. Indeed, the health officials we've been speaking to tell us that 71 people have actually died. And uh, information we are just getting this morning from the Confanochi teaching us to also suggest that six people who were rushed there uh, for treatment, actually one out of that six has also passed on. We'll be bringing you a lot more on this. Said, okay, some more updates based on what the, the police officer just told us is that uh, their preliminary investigations suggest that indeed it was not a brake failure. Uh, it was just because the driver of the Metro Mars, bar, uh, trans, the Metro Mars bus decided to overtake in a sharp cab and that led to that particular accident. But meanwhile, the management of the Metro Mars Transit Limited in a statement signed by uh, the management says, while well, it leaves the Ghana police to uh, do its investigations, the MMT would also use its internal mechanisms to do an in-depth investigation into the road traffic crash. The MMT also says it is taking steps to take up the medical bills which would arise as a result of the road crash. When we heard the news late last night, it came as a shock to us. We didn't know the cause of the crash and so we quickly set up a committee to investigate into the issue. So that is what we've done as a now. A committee is looking into the issue. How often do you service your, your vehicles? Aside um, servicing the bus every month, we have daily checks before the bus moves. We check on the bus daily before it moves. Aside the monthly checks that we have on the buses. We have a technical department that handles the whole check-in system. But they are engineers, they know how to go about their work, and so we leave it to them to do the checks, the technical checks. What have you gathered so far, let me put it? Well, our officers who were at the scene last night 
said they were 53, but as of now, like some few minutes ago, when I spoke to one of them, it's 71 reported dead with a couple of injuries. We'll wait for the committee to bring their report and then we'll make it public. How soon? By How soon? The, well, by the end of the month, the report should be out. Now, two students of the Kwame Nkuma University of Science and Technology are wanted by the university security over the alleged involvement in recent riots leading to the stabbing of two students of the school. Now, the two are said to have played crucial roles in a class between students of Katanga Hall and Unity Hall early this week. Let's get more on this from correspondent John Tay, who has been following this incident closely, and uh, he's now with us on phone to tell us a lot more. So, uh, John Tay, let me ask, uh, what roles are these two students reported to have uh, played exactly? Well, um, Chan Chan Hene, it would be hard to say for now because mm. it's still unclear uh, the exact role they played in that uh, uh, incident last Sunday, uh, which led to the stabbing of two students, like you mentioned. So it's still unclear. I must say, except to uh, say that they are somehow connected to the incident. Okay. So let me ask now, uh, these two persons, who, who are they in the first place? And how come they are on the wanted list of the, the school security? That's right. Um, like I mentioned, they are somehow connect, connected to the incident. Right. And late afternoon yesterday, um, university authorities declared them wanted, precisely the Dean of Students, Dr. Kofi Owusudaku. And uh, these students are Michael Ofori Bwadu, uh, also known as Cyborg, a final year student reading English, and uh, Nat Riafimenta, a third year agri business management student. Uh, so these are the two students uh, who have been declared wanted so far. And indeed, when I went to the campus yesterday, uh, I, I could see notices of them. Uh, pasted on, on various notice boards in uh, the halls of residence on campus. So everywhere you go, at every vantage point on campus, you would see their faces there. And so far, um, Michael Ofori Bwadu, who is affiliated to Unity Hall, has uh, turned himself in. So okay. uh, I, 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 um, I can say and confirm indeed that he passed the whole night at the campus security yesterday. And uh, for, for, for his colleagues at Unity Hall, that was a big worry for them. So quite a number of them, numbering about 30, marched to the uh, campus security to protest his detention. Uh, but campus security would hear none of it, only to say that uh, they are only following orders from above. Uh, so um, I just made some checks a while ago, and I've been given to understand that uh, uh, the head of uh, campus security is now interrogating him. So it's safe to say that he's still in the grips of uh, campus security. But the other guy, Nathaniel Riafimenta, the third year agribusiness uh, management student, uh, is uh, still on the run. We don't know his whereabouts. Uh, he is affiliated to University Hall Katanga. Mm. Do we know whether uh, this gentleman who is on the run has actually been reported to the police? Or uh, the, the university just wants to handle this internally? Yes. For now, they, 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 this is uh, part of their internal investigations. But I'm also given to understand that the police uh, is also handling the issue. But mm. uh, 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 it's safe to say that uh, this is an internal investigation. Okay. As, uh, we mentioned this is being uh, carried out by the campus security. By the campus security. Okay. Yes. Well, so w w one more thing I'd like to know, obviously, is uh, we're told that some two students were stabbed. Now, do we know the conditions of these two students who were stabbed uh, early on when this whole riot uh, broke out? Yes. Um, yesterday, in my interaction with the uh, president of the KNUST Students Representative Council, Isaac uh, uh he made me understand that uh, these uh, students are recuperating, they are uh, responding effectively to treatment, and uh, it's safe to say that uh, they, they are in uh, a, a safe condition now. And he also tells me that the university management is preparing them for counseling uh, in, in, the, in the few days to come. So uh, it's safe to say that in the next uh, two or three days, they would be discharged. John Tay, many thanks for that update. And that was John Tay bringing us updates from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, where we were told that uh, two persons, two students of that particular school, uh, one in Katanga Hall and the other in Unity Hall, uh, were actually, uh, should I say, they're, they're actually on the wanted list of the school's security over the alleged involvement 
in that particular incident that occurred there on Wednesday. We were told that uh, some two persons uh, were stabbed over uh, riots in the school. We were told that these two persons who have been, uh, who, are, who the police or who the security there are actually looking for, had a role to play in this particular incident. We'll bring you a lot more on this subsequently, but let's uh, take the next story. Uh, okay, well, time now for us to take another break here on this. Let's return shortly with some more. Don't go away.